Another story about an $18,000 fine for a ham radio operator, this time because he failed to ID and he was causing harmful interference. Check this out. Thanks for joining me today. These stories are getting a little bit, I don't know, redundant maybe? I don't know. But uh, you guys are giving me some really good comments in the previous few stories I that I did. And this story was sent to me by someone in Discord. In fact, watch to the end. I'm going to give you a super secret word to put in the comments. And it will let me know that you watched till the end. And I'll be sure to respond to all those comments. But once I say this super secret word, you're going to know who sent me this story. This is on the AWRL website. I will share the link to this. And it's from 2020. So it's a few years back. So it's not real recent. But, you know, some of these stories I found have been like in the late 19... 90s or like in the early 2000s something like that so at least this one's a little bit more up to date than that one is but the point is that the fcc is doing something at least march 18 2020 in an enforcement case prompted by complaints filed in 2017 so it took them three freaking years the fcc has imposed an 18 dollar forfeiture on jerry materni kc5 csg of lake charles louisiana lake charles louisiana should tell you where i got the story for intentional interference and failure to identify. The FCC has proposed a fine uh, notice of liability, the NAL, in the case of July 2018, and based on Matern's response to the NAL, on his response to the NAL, okay, so he responded to it, the agency affirmed the fine on March 12th forfeiture order. As the FCC recounted in the FO, the FCC agent observed Matern, Matern I'm going to call him Matern. I don't think his name's Materni. Materni? I'm going to say Matern. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. The FCC agent observed Matern causing intentional interference to a local repeater by gen generating digital noise into an analog radio. The agent further reported that Matern failed to transmit his call sign as required. Now, let me say this real quick. On one of the last videos that I did, a couple of the comments were like, they. it was like they didn't watch the whole video. And that's, that's okay. But a couple of comments I got were something along the lines of, well, how did they prove it was him? If they're just getting calls from concerned neighbors or from sad hams telling on his neighbor, then how do they know it was him? By the definition right here, they the FCC sent agents to this guy's house to observe it. I talked about this in the last video I did about the ham radio operator. I talked about this about the CB operator who would never answer his door. FCC used direction finding equipment in the area and determined that this is the interference was coming from this guy's house same story is true today matern disputed the fcc's findings arguing that the nal should be canceled because the agent was mistaken in his determination that the source of the interference was matern's station as his radio was not capable of operating on the repeater in question the fcc said in the no the no i don't know what that is they have an FO for forfeiture radio and an NAL for a notice of apparent liability. Matern also asserted that he is unable to pay the fine and suggested in response that the FCC should be able to access his financial information. <laughs> well, I mean, let's face it. You never want to pay a fine for doing something intentional. You never want to pay a fine for doing something illegal. You get a speeding ticket. You don't really want to pay it. Well, I need you to take care of the speeding ticket because I, I just don't want to pay it. I can't afford that. Well, then you shouldn't have been speeding. Right. A couple more things about this story, but first let me tell you about today's sponsor, Mezzi and Ploni Coax. You can always save a 10% discount on everything at the Mezzi and Ploni. Link in the description below. Coupon code of HR2 Cables. All of their coax, all of their connectors, all of their tools. These scissors right here, I use these all the time for everything. Stripping wire, cutting coax, cutting cable, cutting wire, everything. So these are really cool scissors that are made by MP. You can save a 10% discount on everything with the code of HR2 cables at the Gigaparts link below. If you go get something from them, be sure to thank them for sponsoring this channel. The FCC countered that the radio the agent observed at Matern's possession was capable of operating on the frequency in question. So that makes me wonder. Matern disputed the FCC's findings, arguing the NNAO should be canceled because the agent was mistaken in his determination that the source of the interference was Matern's station, as his radio is not capable of operating on the repeater frequency in question. Most repeaters are either 2 meters or 440, and many, many of your radios these days are dual band. They'll do both of those frequencies. So this article does not really say what the repeater frequency was. Was it a 220 repeater? Was it a 900 megahertz repeater? Was it a 1.2 gigahertz repeater? If you say, well, it can't be me because I don't have a 1.2 gigahertz radio, that might be a little bit more believable. But if you're 2 meter 440 and you're doing digital noise, it's probably either DMR Fusion or D-Star. Most of those radios 
All of your D-Star and Fusion radios are dual band. And these days, most of your DMR radios used in ham radio are also dual band. So, yeah, that sounds like a, sounds like a crock to me. But I wasn't there. I don't know. I'm moving on. FCC countered that it was capable. We therefore are unpersuaded that the proposed forfeiture should be canceled because he alleges he was not the party causing interference with the repeater and the radio in his possession could not operate on the frequency. So they just repeated the same thing. FCC said in the affirming findings of the NAL. We also are unpersuaded by Matern's argument that he lacks the ability to pay the full $18,000 forfeiture. The FCC said Matern failed to provide the FCC with proof of inability to pay as required by the NAL. The FCC gave Matern 30 days to pay the fine or face having the case turned over to U.S. Department of Justice for enforcement. And once again, there's no follow-up to this story. The story is four years old at the time of this recording. And I wish that they would give some sort of editorial follow-up down here at the bottom. What happened after that? I don't know, but there you go. Lake Charles, Louisiana, $18,000 fine for KC5CSG. Assuming that's his original call sign, he got his call sign before I did. Uh, I got mine in 1994. Mine's KC5HWB, and they always go in alphabetical order. So C's come before H, so he's had his call sign longer than I have. He should know better than this, assuming that all of this is true. Today's super secret word to put in the comments is side boom. Side boom. So, yeah. <laughs> These stories are fun because all of the comments I get, I, I shouldn't say all, many, many of the comments I get on many videos that, that the FCC doesn't care, or the FCC doesn't do anything. They are using direction-finding materials. They're getting a call from complaining citizens, whether it's a ham, a CB guy, or just somebody who's getting interference. They're getting a phone call. They're going out to this person's home or business they're using direction finding materials to determine that the interference is in fact coming from that guy's house and then they're issuing a notice of a fine or a notice of forfeiture or a notice to stop what they're doing and when they don't comply they get fined but i sure would like to find an, a follow-up video to one of these videos one day let me know if you've heard this story if you have any further information about what happened after this fact if you like this story here's some other stories right over here that are just like this one 73 guys everyone have a good afternoon